Hello, Loom Knitters. I'd like to show you how I loom knit this colorful DIY patchwork blanket using the garter stitch. I think you'll like the sense of gratification each time you complete a square. And do subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my step-by-step -step videos. I plan on knitting up a storm during this COVID-19 outbreak, and I'd love to share my ideas with you as we stay home together. In this video, you'll see the following steps. Number one, how to start your first square, which means we cast on. Number two, how to do the garter stitch. Number three, how to finish your square, which means we bind off. And number four, how to join your squares and put all of your pieces together into one lovely blanket. As for the supplies, you'll need six to 10 balls of yarn. I had used six Lion Brand Woolies balls and two were bonus bundles and the other four were regular sized balls. You'll need a loom, which can be a round loom or a long loom. I used a round one from Loops and Threads. You'll also need a hook, a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and a measuring tape. So let's start our patchwork blanket by casting on our first square. You'll begin with a slip knot. Make a loop in your left hand and hold the tail in your right. With your left hand, grab some yarn from your right and pull it through to make a new loop. Now take this slip knot and place it on your anchor peg. Next, you'll completely wrap the peg on your left back to front. Let's go to the second peg as well and we'll wrap it back to front. And let's do the same for the third peg back to front. So for each peg, you're making a letter E shape and you're always starting from the back. So keep wrapping until you've wrapped 15 pegs in total. But do feel free to adjust the number of pegs you use if you're using a different loom or different yarn or if you want a different sized square. My squares ended up being 7.5 by 7.5 inches or 19 by 19 centimeters. What's important is that you end up with squares, not rectangles. On your last peg, wrap it a second time, still going back to front. Now take your hook and knit over the bottom loop, which means you put the bottom loop over the peg. Now for the peg to your right, you're gonna make a letter U and you're going front to back. And now you knit over that loop with your hook. Again, on the next peg to your right, you're making a letter U front to back, and then you're knitting over the bottom loop. So each time you're making this letter U, you're never wrapping it completely. Instead, you're just half wrapping it and you're going front to back. So keep making these U shapes, which is the U knit stitch, until you get to the very first peg that we had started with. Here I'm wrapping the last two pegs using the U knit stitch. And now I have cast it on. So step one is complete now. And now we're going to move into the garter stitch. The garter stitch is made when you do a whole row of purl stitches and then you do a whole row of knit stitches. So we are going to purl our way all the way to the left. So you'll lay the working yarn along the bottom of the pegs. Then with your hook, you're gonna go inside the loop from the top and then you're going to grab the working yarn and you're going to pull it upwards. Here you're making a new loop. You're going to take the old loop off of the peg and you'll put the new loop on the peg and then you'll tighten your working yarn a little bit. Let's go to the next peg. So you've laid your working yarn along the bottom. With your hook, you're going inside that loop. You're going to grab the working yarn you're pulling it upwards to make a new loop. You're taking the old loop off of the peg and you'll put the new loop on the peg and then you're going to tighten. Okay, great, so let's do this one more time together. Your working yarn is along the bottom. With your hook, you're going inside the loop to grab the working yarn you're pulling that working yarn upwards to make a new loop. Now you're taking the old loop off of the peg and you're putting your new loop on the peg and then you're tightening your working yarn. 
So now that you know how to do the purl stitch, you can continue to purl each peg until the end of the row. So here I fast forwarded to the very left of my loom and I'm finishing up my last two purl stitches. So now the purl row is done and next we're going to do a row of knit stitches. So you're going to do the E-wrap version of the knit stitch from the left side of your loom towards the right. So let's do the E-wrap on this first peg by wrapping it clockwise back to front. And then with your hook, we're going to knit over that bottom loop and then we're going to move on to the next peg. So we're wrapping it again back to front. We're going to knit over that bottom loop. So I also wanted to mention that I got inspiration for this blanket from a needle knitting video from Wool and the Gang called How to Knit a Blanket. I'm really thankful for this video, um, which I've watched at least five times. So feel free to check out their channel, um, it's Wool and the Gang, for some great knitting ideas. So let's keep going with our knit stitches. So you can keep knitting until you reach the right side of your loom. So here I've jumped ahead to do the last knit stitch of this row. So we need to remove the slip knot from the anchor peg. And now we're going to purl again. So you'll need to alternate between purl rows and knit rows until you make a square. After you do about 10 rows or so, you can measure out the width of your square. That width, of course, is going to be your length. And I suggest that your last row be a purl row. That way we can bind off together starting from the left. So let's meet again when you've done your first square. So we're now ready to bind off together and I'm going to call the far left peg peg one and the next peg to the right will be peg two. So let's wrap peg one back to front which is clockwise and then we're going to knit over that bottom loop. Next, I'm pushing down the loop on peg two to make some room, and then I'm wrapping peg two a little bit more loosely than usual. And then I'm going to knit over that bottom loop, and then I'll move the loop from peg two to peg one. And then I'm going to knit over. Now I'm going to move the loop over to the right, and we have a new peg one and a new peg two. So now we do the process again by wrapping peg two loosely and then we knit over. We're going to move the loop from peg two over to peg one. And then we're going to knit over. And then we'll move the loop over to the right. Now we have a new peg one and a new peg two. So we're going to wrap peg two a bit loosely and then we're going to knit that over. So we're going to move the loop from peg two to peg one and then we'll knit over. So we'll move the loop over to the right and now we have a new peg one and a new peg two. And here we can see the nice braid that we've created so far. So I think you can keep binding off on your own until you're left with just one loop on your loom. Just follow these steps here. And try to wrap your pegs a bit loosely so that the braid doesn't get too tight. We don't want your bind off edge to get squished in. After you do one or two squares, you'll find the perfect amount of tension. So I'm jumping ahead to the spot where I have one last loop on the loom. Now you need to measure out a really long tail that's three times the length of your square. Okay, so you're gonna cut that tail. Now you're going to remove your square from the loom. So you're gonna take the tail and put it through that last loop. And now your square is done. So now you need to make enough squares to make your blanket the size you want. When your squares are done, you can arrange them so the colors are nicely spread out. Then we'll meet again to join them. I'll demonstrate how to join squares using a yellow square and a white square. First, I'm going to position the yellow square so it has horizontal rows, and I'm placing the white square so that it has vertical columns. 
I'm threading my yarn needle with the white tail and I'm going to sew into the first stitch I can see on the left. Then I'm going to sew through the top of the braid on the white square and I'll go back into that very first stitch. So now I'm going into the next strand on the white square and then I'll sew into the yellow pearl bump. So this is just one way to join squares. You can feel free to try another method if you prefer. So on your own, just keep sewing downwards until your squares are completely joined. And you'll need to weave in your ends with either a yarn needle or a crochet hook. You can knit your squares in whatever order you like, but I found it easier to sew together entire rows like this. After these strips were done, I moved on to sewing them all together. As you're putting together your blanket, you'll find that sometimes you have no tails to sew with. That's okay, just tie on a piece of yarn to your slip knot and keep on sewing. Now that the rows have been sewn together, the patchwork blanket is fully assembled and done. I hope you like this video, and if you want more videos that are concise and that have written instructions to help you, please subscribe to Ms. Yarn.